In the next few minutes, I will show you everything you need to know to use the DJI Action 4 properly. I'll show you what hidden features it has and how to get the most out of the Action 4. At the same time, I'll tell you what my 10 favorite features of this great new action camera are and show you how they work. Before we even turn on the Action 4, let's take a quick look at the well-designed body. Actually, the Action 4 hardly differs from its predecessor on the outside. On the side is the power button, which you use to turn on the camera and change the recording mode. And on the top is the shutter button, which you use to start and stop recordings. On the left and right, there is a side door that you can open by sliding it up or down. Behind the right cover, you will find a USB-C port. You can use it to charge the Action 4 and connect it to a PC. Behind the left door is the battery and a slot for a micro SD card. It's important to note that you can't use just any type of SD card with the Action 4. It has to be a UHS-1 card with a speed rating of 3. Very good, for example, are the cards from SanDisk such as the SanDisk Extreme or the Extreme Pro. By the way, you can find a link to all the accessories I mentioned in this video in the video description. About the body of the Action 4, there are three other important things you should know. The lens cover can be easily removed by turning it to the left. It is therefore very easy to replace if it should unfortunately get broken. The side door on the right side is also easy to remove. To do so, slide it down, open it and simply push it up a bit. This might be necessary if you want to connect an external microphone to the USB port. When you close the side doors, always make sure that no red color is visible, because only then the door is closed correctly and the camera is really waterproof. And that brings us to the third point. The Action 4 is waterproof up to a depth of 18 meters without any additional housing. However, you should not forget that the hard impact, for example by jumping into the water, could affect the water resistance of the camera. The quick release slots for attaching the camera to the magnetic mount are located on the bottom. The magnetic mount is the second great strength of this camera. In the package, besides the camera, there is also such a quick release adapter mount. This adapter mount has a base that is compatible with all GoPro mounts. You can simply put the camera on it and press it in. However, please make sure that it fully locks into place on both sides, because only then it is securely attached. Once it's locked in place, you don't have to worry, the mount holds absolutely securely. To remove the camera, simply press both sides of the adapter mount together at the same time and the camera can be easily removed. With a little practice, you can even do it with one hand. With the quick release mount, you can quickly and easily remove the Action 4 from one mount, make changes and then attach it to another mount. And all without the need to turn the screw. If you want to shoot for social media, you can also mount the Action 4 vertically. However, you'll need the frame for that. Take off the Action 4, open the buckle of the supplied frame, make sure that the shutter button of the camera is in line with the shutter button of the frame and slide the camera into the frame from the front. Now you close the buckle and can attach the camera together with the frame to the quick release mount. This is not only possible horizontally, but also vertically. And the frame has another advantage. It offers additional protection, especially the back display is better protected by the protruding edge. One last tip about the mounts. The accessories in the standard package are of course far from sufficient to exploit the full potential of this camera. For that, you should get yourself quite a few mounts. Basically, I always recommend a chest mount for POV shots, a good pole, a floating hand grip for underwater use and possibly a handlebar mount for attaching two bars of different sizes. By the way, if you need the GPS data of your shots, you should get the wristband with the remote control. It also captures the GPS data. When you turn on the Action 4 for the first time, you need to connect it to the DJI Memo app. To do this, turn on the camera and launch the app. The app should find the camera relatively quickly. You connect it and can now activate the camera. If there is a new firmware, the app will tell you and you should install it immediately. Another strength of the Action 4 is that you can control it easily via the app. Once you've connected it, the camera's preview image appears and you can adjust all of the recording settings. And of course, start and stop a recording. The app has a lot of additional features. We'll take a look at a few of them a little later. But for now, I want to show you how to operate the camera itself and ease of use is certainly one of the Action 4 strengths. This includes the fact that you can operate the camera not only via the back display, but also via the front display. The operation via the front display is identical, although the icons are of course displayed slightly smaller. When you swipe from the left to right, you change the shooting mode. Besides video, there are also photos, slow motion and time-lapse or hyperlapse. 
By the way, you can also change the mode with the power button, also called quick switch button. This quick switch button has an unusual but interesting feature. You can personalize the modes that appear when you use the quick switch button. For example, you can choose whether the slow motion mode should appear or not. You can also activate a voice output that tells you which mode has just been activated. So that's perfect for situations where you want to change the mode but can't look at the display. I'll show you how to personalize the quick switch button's functionality a bit later. Swiping down from the top opens the control menu. Swiping up from the bottom opens the recording settings. The icon here on the left lets you play back your videos. The icon here on the right opens the advanced recording settings. And if you tap and hold on the zoom icon, you can zoom in and out. I wouldn't recommend using this feature though, because it results in a digital zoom, which leads to a reduction in image quality. The Action 4 already offers a very good image quality in the default settings. However, you should definitely know the most important settings for best results. These are the resolution and frame rate. I would always recommend the highest resolution of 4K on the Action 4. A standard video file has a format of 16 to 9. The 4 to 3 format will result in black bars on the left and right sides but the field of view will be enlarged at the top and bottom. For certain shots, this can be interesting, because you have some room to adjust the framing. But personally, I mostly use 16 to 9. The frame rate determines how many frames per second are captured. The more frames per second, the smoother and perhaps more natural the shot will look. For particularly cinematic look and in low light, however, a low frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second is rather recommended. If you are not sure, you can use 30 frames per second to start with. For slow motion, I recommend 120 frames per second. But keep in mind, if you don't use the slow motion mode but the video mode, you still have to slow down the shot in post. If you want to use your Action 4 as a dash cam or a body cam, it should record in a continuous loop and only save the last important minutes permanently. You can set it here in the upper left corner under loop. The duration of the loop corresponds to the recording time which is continuously resaved. The Action 4 features excellent image stabilization. It already works very well in the default setting. Rocksteady Plus is an even improved version of the Rocksteady stabilization but it also results in a very strong crop of the image. This is also true for horizon balancing. This feature also ensures that the horizon always stays straight, no matter how you turn the camera. However, this only applies up to a maximum rotation of 45 degrees. If you reduce the resolution to 2.7K, you can also activate horizon steady. In this case, the horizon remains straight, even if you rotate the camera completely. In most cases, I think the standard rock steady stabilization is quite sufficient. One of the great strengths of the Action 4 is that you can also adjust the recording settings to your needs in great detail. For the additional recording settings, tap on the settings icon on the right side. For the best possible results, you should know a few features here. The Action 4's default field of view is D-Warp. The Action 4 has a fisheye lens, which results in relatively strong distortions. In the D-Warp setting, these distortions are largely removed. In return, the field of view is somewhat smaller than in the other settings. After all, the actual field of view of the lens is more according to the setting wide. DJI recommends this setting, especially underwater. Personally, I'm a fan of ultra-wide, the widest field of view of the Action 4. This is especially well suited for POV shots, for example when shooting with the chest mount or helmet mount. Also because it is especially vertically much wider. If you tap on Pro in the upper right corner, you can even set the exposure and white balance manually. I rarely do that on an action camera. But what's interesting is that you can adjust the exposure up or down in the exposure menu in auto mode. This way, the automatic will expose your shot a little brighter or darker. This can be very useful depending on the situation. For example, to prevent certain areas in the image from burning out and appearing too bright. If, on the other hand, you want to edit the colors of your shots, you should activate the color profile D-Log M under color. This is a 10-bit color profile with low contrast and saturation, which is very well suited for color grading and slightly improves the dynamic range. But remember, if you use this profile, you'll have to edit the colors of each shot in post. And then there is another very useful feature, image adjustment. Image adjustment lets you control the amount of noise reduction 
and the digital sharpness of the shot. These small action cameras tend to apply a lot of digital sharpness. This artificially raises the contrast of the edges. The image gets a more digital look. I therefore prefer to reduce the sharpness a bit. DJI also offers a portrait preset that certainly does the same thing. With 1 over 1.3 inches, the Action 4 has a relatively large image sensor. This can show its strengths, especially in low light conditions. And the Action 4 has two features that can further improve the image quality in low light. If you activate the low light image enhancement feature, the camera will automatically detect low light situations and reduce image noise caused by high ISO values. Basically, the image is additionally sharpened. This feature is not compatible with a few other settings, for example, the field of view ultra wide or with high frame rates. In low light, the camera's automatic system mostly uses a low shutter speed. This allows the camera to capture more light. However, a low shutter speed results in worse image stabilization. If you are shooting in low light and need good image stabilization, you should activate the EIS priority low light feature. The image stabilization will improve, but the image quality will unfortunately suffer. This feature is not available in Pro mode. Besides the standard video mode, I especially like the time-lapse mode on this camera. Therefore, I would like to explain a few things to you about it. You open the capture settings as usual by swiping up from the bottom. In this mode, there is a distinction between time-lapse and hyperlapse. In both cases, photos are taken at specific intervals and stitched together to create a video file. The result is an accelerated representation of reality. The difference between time-lapse and hyperlapse is that in hyperlapse mode the recording is additionally stabilized. Only the hyperlapse mode is therefore suitable for recordings in which you move the camera. For the hyperlapse mode, the higher the rate, the more the shot is accelerated. For good results, I recommend a rate of 15 or 30. In time-lapse mode, you have to use the Action 4 on a tripod. For best results, set it to the highest resolution of 4K. For the time-lapse settings, the Action 4 already offers a few presets. If you want to set them yourself, swipe up and you can then set the interval at which the camera will take images. Here, the more movement in the image, the shorter the interval should be. For moving clouds, for example, an interval of 5 seconds is suitable. For a street or a square with people, the interval should be shorter. With the duration, you define how long the camera should record with this interval. The moon symbol in the upper left corner stands for the low power mode. You can activate it to save battery during a long recording. Now you know everything you need to know to take really great shots with the Action 4. But there are still a few very interesting settings that can facilitate and improve the use of the Action 4. Let's open the control menu. Here, you can enable orientation lock and prevent the camera from from unintentionally switching to portrait mode. You can enable screen lock or voice control. You can set whether the front display should show the image in a 16 to 9 format or if the whole space should be used. But what I find most interesting are the first two features here on the top left. With the first icon, you can create your own preset. Just tap on the plus icon and the current camera settings will be saved to a new preset. Your preset is now also displayed in the menu with the recording modes. As I told you, you can also switch modes with the side button called the quick switch button. Button. And it's exactly the functionality of this button that you can adjust here via this menu. That is, whether there should be a voice output or which modes can be accessed with the button. Over the icon in the upper right corner, you can open the actual camera menu. Here, I just want to show you one more thing. Snapshot stands for the feature that when the camera is turned off, and you press the shutter button, a recording is started immediately. Here you can specify what kind of recording it should be. A recording with the last settings, generally always a video recording or a hyperlapse recording and so on. Now when you've taken your shots, there are several ways you can transfer your files. Of course, directly via the SD card. But you can also connect the camera to your PC via USB-C. Or you can download your recordings to your phone via the Mimo app. And in the Mimo app, I want to show you two very interesting features, the AI editor and the invisible selfie stick effect. The AI editor creates a short edit of your best clips completely automatically and adds a look and music. It works quite well. You need to download the clips you want to use for the edit beforehand. Then you can select them here and choose add. Now the edit will be created automatically. Here you can change various things like the filter or the sequence of the clips. If you have taken a shot with a pole or a selfie stick, you can remove the pole or stick from any shot using the app. 
To do this, open the shot with the selfie stick and then open the settings down here. On the far right is the Invisi stick feature. You select it and export the clip. The clip will now be uploaded to the cloud, edited and exported again. This can take a few minutes. But then you get your clip with the selfie stick removed and it works surprisingly well. I think you know everything now to get the most out of this camera. Give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you. There will be more videos about the Action 4, so stay tuned and see you next time.